Hi everyone, I'm Tani Roniger, um, and uh, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about um, the question I get asked most frequently about my work these days, which is how do I store it? Um, some of you may know that for the past year and a half or so, I've been making these large scale charcoal drawings. Um, and um, the uh, charcoal on like heavy watercolor paper um, that I don't spray, okay? I, I haven't quite yet figured out how to seal these things. So they're very fragile, you know, nothing can touch the surface. Um, so storing, storing them isn't exactly um, so straightforward. So I'm here to demonstrate the method that I have come up with. Um, keep in mind that while I present this, I'm relatively new to this. I've only been doing large scale drawings for, you know, uh, you know a year or so. Um, so I, for all I know, the, the method I've developed could be completely harebrained and all wrong. Uh, so if you have better ideas, I would really appreciate hearing them. Surely, you know, some of you have the same problem, you have to store drawings uh, without touching the surface of the drawing. The fact that they're so big doesn't make it any easier. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let me get into this presentation. Okay, uh, so the first thing is, um, what I, I essentially make uh, foam core cases, okay? I'm, uh, all the drawings are different sizes, so I need to make a custom um, case for each one. Uh, I use this company, Uline, uh, they're great. I order these things, I order 40 by 60 sheets and in, in packs of 25. Um, uh, it's not cheap, certainly. <laughs> I get this 3 uh width. Uh, you, as you can see, you can, you can get it slightly thinner. I don't recommend that. Uh, you can even get half inch, but I think it's excessive. Uh, 3 16 seems to be about fine. Um, all told, my pack of 25, uh, comes to about $300, okay, including shipping. Again, not cheap, but it's so worth it. You know, you want, you want a good way to store them that's gonna really protect the things. Um, I, so, so some of my drawings are larger than 40 by 60. Uh, I've only recently discovered that this company does make foam core quite a bit larger than 40 by 60, which I am going to start ordering. But for the time being, I, I will show you um, how to do it with 40 by 60s even if your drawings are larger. Uh, other thing I need is um, artist tape. I use the nice two inch thick tape. Um, you can probably get away with a little bit uh, thinner, you know, I don't know, inch and a half. No, in, no, no thinner than that though. Just get the two inches, what I recommend. Again, not cheap, but really worth it. The important thing is that the tape be, of course, acid free, okay, pH neutral. Um, I use white, comes in a lot of different colors. So for this demonstration, I will be showing you how I uh, encased this beast who I uh, recently just uh, finished. So this one's about 64 by, yeah, 64 by 44. Um, so as you can see, uh, if you can see, it is attached to a large piece of foam core. Um, and, and indeed it has to be, well, I, that's how I work on these things. So it's the first thing I do is I attach the paper to the foam core. I, it gets taped, I'll, I'll show you how. Um, and the reason is that I, I need to be able to move the things around. Um, sometimes I work on them, you know, leaning against the wall. You can see one there on the left, sort of leaning against the wall, it's up on the saw horses. And then sometimes I need to bring them down and put them, lay them flat on the table and work on them like that. Um, so th these things are light, you know, the foam core is really light. It's nice and easy to transport it uh, and it does keep it nice and stiff. Um, okay, so first things first. Now, before I even begin to draw, the first thing I do to my paper is I tape the back up. Um, so this is the back of uh, the one that I just showed you, but this is what I would do first thing. And I use the two inch tape, I go along the edges all of them um, with this two inch tape uh, very thoroughly. 
Yeah. So this is th this is not meant to come off. This this tape is meant to stay. I have no intention of taking it off. I suppose it could be removed um, by somebody far more skilled than I. Uh, but I have no intention of removing it. So therefore, again, it's crucial that it be really good quality tape. It's not going to you know I don't know yellow the paper or anything like that. Um, so that's the first thing. Now. Be, the, the second thing is that the, the drawing paper needs to be attached to the foam core, okay? The way that I do that is I then run a second piece of tape along, and, and when I attach them to the board, I and to the foam core cases, I usually only tape the bottom and top. There's, it's a little excessive to do all four sides. So bottom and top, I, I apply an additional uh, strip of tape, uh, slightly offset from the original, as you can see. Of course, the adhesive is now, you know, facing down, obviously, because it's attached to the, the, the tape underneath. Um, and then, you know, when that's done, you're going to have a third strip. That's a third strip. Right, so the third strip, so imagine I flip over the drawing. Now the drawing side is up, and I add that third strip. Now, of course, um, uh, adhesive side <laughs> toward the back, right? Obviously, because you're going to attach, this is the sticky side now, this is going to be attached to the board. It's going to, it's got a thorough grasp on the piece of tape underneath, which in turn is attached very well to the drawing itself. So yes, it's a lot of tape, but you know what? You know, better safe than sorry. Um, these two guys rip up very easily, rip off, I should say. Um, you know, when you go to finish the drawing and, and start, you know, put it in the case, you, you peel these off. They stick together, you know, because they're adhesive and adhesive. Um, you just strip, rip them off, and I usually don't have any problem with them taking up this first layer of tape. They usually just come right off, which is perfect. Uh, so next, uh, because as I said, some of them, a lot in these days, are, uh, of my drawings are larger than my 40 by 60 foam core, I have to extend the pieces of 40 by 60 foam core. Um, uh, this is not hard to do, you know, you get your uh, straight edge and, and a blade. And um, so for example, this, this piece was what, 44 by 64. So I had to construct two sheets that were 48 by 68. Okay, give myself a little room to maneuver on the, each side. Um, so I cut the, the, the additional panels. Um, and then you'll also see these strips. Now, these strips are, are crucial to this, this method. Um, these are three quarter inch strips of the same 3 16th uh, phone core, right? And I just cut a bunch of them. You know, just have a bunch of them lying around so I can, you know, I don't have to, be cutting them while I'm constructing. I just always have extra. And then, so here you can see that my bottom panel, the case, each case has obviously a bottom and a top. Okay, it's fully enclosed on all sides. Um, here's the bottom. This is the part that the drawing is going to be attached to. Okay, face up toward us. It's going to be attached to the sheet. As you can see, I've, I've pieced it all together to get this extended piece of foam core large enough to hold the drawing. And here is one of those strips. I run the strips along all four edges, all right? Um, and this is crucial. So I imagine one could get away with much less tape than I use, uh, but I, I, you know, I like to be thorough and, and I don't want the thing to fall apart. And the last thing you want is um, for the drawing to touch any of the adhesive part of the tape, right? So you really want to get it down there very thoroughly. So I tape, you know, I tape, I put one strip along this outer edge uh, and uh, for, uh, wrap it over to seal it to the, to tape it at the back. And then I put an additional strip on top to attach it, you know, to seal up the gap there between the strip and the um, substrate, right? So, Overkill, perhaps, but uh, there it is. That's how I do it, all four sides. Now, next you have um, uh, put the patient on the table, and we're going to slide the the bottom part of the case right underneath, face up, and uh, so. Uh, 
yeah, you can't really see it here, and I'm sorry about that. But um, so when I transfer the drawing from the working board, the foam core that I use to, to work with, um, I, I remove all that tape. And the reason is that, you know, you could, you could um, conceivably use the exact same tape to put it in the case. Um, but I like to have clean tape. I don't know. I just, I want it to look clean and presentable. Um, so I take that off and I apply, of course, going back to this, all these layers of tape, you know, the one um, 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 facing as, as it is here down and then, and then the next one um, here, this one facing up. Okay. So then when you stick it in there, you've got this nice piece of tape here that wraps around, that's holding onto the drawing, of course, really tight. And then it wraps around to the um, bottom side, uh, the other side of the bottom board, okay? The exterior side. Um, so uh, again, as I said, I, when I put them in the cases, I usually only do top and bottom, um, tape top and bottom to the case. That usually does the job, you know? And then the beautiful thing is that when you slide that top of the lid of the case over, it does not touch the surface of the drawing because it's raised, right? It sits on those, those little lips. Um, now, if you stored the drawings flat, say, like it is now on the table, and you, you know, it's got a whole stack of them on top, of course, the top part of the case is going to sag and it's going to touch the drawing, the face of the drawing. You don't want that, right? So tape it shut. It's all nice and, you know, it's just perfect. And then you're going to store it like this. Um, best thing would be not to lean them against each other. Uh, but I found that it really doesn't matter too much. They can withstand a little bit of weight. Uh, in other words, the face, the open face, the unsealed face of the charcoal drawing can withstand a little bit of touching, as long as it's not like moving around the surface, you know, just touches it a little bit, removes a tiny bit of the pigment, but not much. Um, and the beauty is, so, you know, whenever I do this, you know, when it's one is complete, and here's the one we just did, it's, it's really a good feeling because I know it's taped, it's closed on all sides, it's, it's, it's uh, safe in there, it's not going to get any adhesive stuck to the surface, it's, um, you know, and I, I feel very good about it. But the beautiful thing is that also when you want to show them to people, you don't have to take the damn thing out of the case. You simply run the razor blade along three sides, okay? And you open the thing like a book. You lean it against the wall. And you can show them to people like that. Um, and then you close it back up like a book, tape all the sides, and there you go. Um, so I'm trying to think if I, if I, uh, left anything out. It was, felt like a very short presentation, but I, I hope that that was helpful. And again, uh, I would love to hear of a better method for sure. Um, I would also love to hear from anybody who knows how to seal charcoal drawings safely. Um, the reason I'm hesitant is that uh, when I've done it in the past, I've noticed that, of course, the drawing changes, right? It gets darker. Um, so I'm really worried about that. You know, these things take so long to make and it's there yeah i just I, I haven't been able to risk it yet um but i, I would love to hear a good method for doing that uh I, um, i'm assuming it can be done uh and i do want to seal them i know there's another issue but because they they they're shown unframed um so that's crucial anyway uh i'm going to post this on facebook and instagram and if anybody has any questions or indeed suggestions um, I'd love to hear them. Okay. Bye guys.